Okay, so we're going to talk about um, painting with contrast paints for the Joan of Arc miniatures. Uh, this is Joan of Arc board game, miniatures board game uh, that was kickstarted last year, and the 1.5 version is due out uh, sometime in quarter three of this year. Um, and because we're talking about 15 mil scale, as you can see, these are quite small miniatures, um, and contrast is perfect for these. So what I've done. In preparation for this, is uh, I've used a grey, I've used a grey spray to spray them first, and then from above at a slight angle, I've sprayed them with white. It's, it's mostly white um, for, for for most of these models. Zenithal highlight um, uh, base base coating, I guess it's called. Um, uh, it's because the contrasts are quite thin, so they uh, they do. They do show these uh, these differences in shades if you if you apply those to those to those prime primers. Now I've started a couple of them with the yellow, as you can see with these two. Uh, so the yellow is started on those, and I just want to show you how quickly and how easy it is to paint these miniatures with contrast paints. So I'm going to start. I'm just going to get, get the grey out to start with. Okay. Um, so. This is a fantastic paint. It's uh, basili basilicum um, grey, basilicum grey, basilicum grey. Yeah. <laughs> um, make sure you give them good shake beforehand. You want to mix up those pigments. Uh, make sure you get a nice even coat when you do apply it. It's still the same. Uh, my biggest issue with these is the Citadel uh, paint pots. They're they're pretty terrible. Uh, they do get clogged up around the edges, uh, which stops them from shutting completely. So you've got to be constantly um, clearing, clearing the uh, the plastic rim around the outside. Uh, cause it just drips into there, and then it, especially with these contrasts, it's kind of like a, a gel. It's it solidifies like a gel. And it's really quite annoying. <laughs> so um, I just literally use this for all non-metallic metals. So for all the metals, and you just paste it on. And what you'll see, as we paste it on, oh, being careful with his head, just realised uh, this guy has, no, that's right, he's got a helmet. Uh, so no face on this one, it's pure, um, and you can be quite liberal with it. I liken contrast paints to watercolouring. So obviously if I, if I went over the bits I actually want, want to be grey over this yellow, it would cover it. And you wouldn't be able to replace that. You can put yellow on it and it'll get rid of it, um, like with normal paints. Um, so you will you would have to rebase it and then um, to be able to effectively recoat it with an even layer. So it's not it's not without its its issues, um, the contrast. It's not simple as just slapping on the paint and it all works. But if you're relatively, and you don't have to be super careful, especially at this scale, if you're relatively careful, you will get a really good result really quickly. So as you can see, uh, we've got the top part done. Now we've got some uh, silver starting over here. Uh, I'm just going to go to a smaller brush for this part. So again, just make sure you put on a fair amount of coating. And to be completely honest, if you go over the, uh, for example, if you go over, over the uh, the wood here, it's not the end of the world. It'll still come out. It'll just be a slightly darker brown uh, than what it should be. So there we are, finishing his metal for his arm, his gauntlet. Uh, then we've got, uh, it looks like, knees. Uh, just Bring it out of focus. So we've got the knees we need to do now. So again, just place that on. Relative. I'm going to I'm going to be doing his uh, trousers dark brown anyway. So just like that's why I say it's like watercolors. Just like watercolors. If you to be honest, if you go uh, a little bit wrong with the lighter color, the darker color will effectively go over it. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Let's get the uh, Edge of the sword. 
like that. And then a bit of the sword that he's not actually using. He's got this big halberd. There we go. So that's pretty much the grey. I don't know if we can see that super clearly. Okay. Um, and let me just show you the yellow because um, you can see the, um, the final results there. Uh, make sure you do shake the yellow strong uh, thoroughly because it's um, just the nature of the pigment in yellow paint. It's, uh, it, it needs to be mixed well. So here we've got Iandan yellow. I hate the names of these things as well. <laughs> I just got bright yellow. Okay, um, so this one, this guy's a uh, brand new. So he's fresh, so he does need that yellow cane. And again, just by liberally placing this on. And you want it to be relative, I mean, not not, not stupidly, uh, lib, uh, not loads and loads and loads of paint, but you want, you want to, you don't want to scrimp on it because you want it to get into the recesses and give you that really nice contrast between the, um, the light and shaded areas. Oops, sorry. And then you just keep uh, painting through it. Again, if you, to be honest, because yellow is really quite a light colour, if you get over the edges, it's not the end of the world with the yellow. Um, try to avoid it as best you can. Uh, for example, I'm just going to go over the belts because I'm going to be using a brown on the belts anyway, and that's not really going to affect it much. And you can quite clearly see that it doesn't take long. before you actually um, you get these miniatures painted. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that's perhaps, uh, you notice the pooling effect, so just, just pull your brush across uh, to take away any pooling uh, where you don't you don't want it you don't want it stupidly um, giving you a lot of a lot of a lot of pigment colour at one particular recess, uh, that, won't, that won't look natural, uh, it won't look good. Okay, so there's the yellow done, on another guy. Uh, the brown, and, and this, the other thing about this, this stuff dries relatively quickly. I mean obviously uh, this is the one we just painted with the grey, and you can see it's wet, so we wouldn't go over this one in particular uh, yet. Uh, so let's carry on with the yellow, let's look at it out. And then what I would tend to do is I'm, I'm basically following the uh, card art for these is do them in batches. I wouldn't do too many at a time because you basically will lose the will to paint. Um, if you're doing like 10, 15 of the same one, uh, well, for me anyway, I couldn't do that. Um, I'm happy to do up to, up to 10, depending on what miniature it is. If I'm doing a little bit of variance in the uh, colouring, then yeah, definitely I can do a bit more um, than five or six. Uh, but if, like these, I'm planning on just painting exactly the same, then I kind of want to break it up a little bit. So I've done half of these already. And actually, I, um, I painted the vast majority of these ones before I found contrast paints and got into contrast paints. Uh, and they took a lot longer. Okay, there's the yellow of the next one. And you can start to see how quick this can be. Now there's some fantastic colors uh, on the contrast colors. They are they are more bright, they are more vivid. But to be honest, I, I really like the look. I like the vivid look of contrast paints. And and the uh, the kind of, uh, the, I don't wanna say polished look that it gives you with such, such quick results. Uh, I, I really like it I like because I, I like vivid colors on my game board um, now if you're more into you know ultra accurate um, colors for the time and stuff th this will probably be too bright I imagine because uh, it wouldn't be as bright as this back in the day also if you wanted them to be weathered and kind of like war ridden uh, they wouldn't look anything like this um, but you can quite see it I mean it's, it's, it's lovely it's a lovely colour it gives, um, and this is the yellow. Yellow is one of the best contrast colours 
It's absolutely fantastic. I really like the yellow. Um, and let's do this last one. So just paint, paint, paint. Don't worry too much because it's again, like I say, it's the it's the lighter colour. Try not to get it everywhere because um, effectively, oh, the other thing I've noticed is if you try and contrast over other contrast, it doesn't work quite as well. Um, I guess because you've covered the recesses with something other than white and it really works well on these white actually the best the best color to prime your miniatures if you're using contrast is Rathbone is Rathbone it's, it's a fantastic color and it is by far gives the best results it gives a kind of warm color whereas this white gives a very bright color where you want it a little bit warmer uh, a little less bright a little less vivid um, but yeah it, as you'll see, it still gives good results. So there we go. We just painted four guys uh, with their white yellow tunics and one guy with his um, with his grey. And it's taken well about ten minutes. No, probably less than that. So it really does go quick. Let's let's get the grey back out. So here's the grey. Let's do his armor. So again, place it on, making sure it's not pulling too much. And then um, come down here. And I've been painting uh, Blood Rage, uh, Batman, City, Gotham City Chronicles, uh, Rising Sun, um, Western Legends, uh, pretty much exclusively with um, with these contrast paints. I have done a few model. It depends on what it is. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll need to use like traditional methods and a little bit more just to get the right effect because uh, contrast paints obviously for, well for me I don't mix them um, so it, it's got to be the colors that I've got available and I have I've got I'll show you my uh, collection of colors in a second uh, contrast colors but I've not got a huge range um, I've just got what I feel like is is the right colors that are needed to make a good job of it uh, a lot of uh, browns I think browns, skin tones, um, different different kinds of shades of grey browns are, are really quite important, uh, for, especially for the kind of miniatures I paint. Um, obviously, you've got your red, your green, your blue, uh, which are essential, and, and, and a skin colour. I'll show you some of the uh, the good ones in a second. Um, but yeah, literally, I'm just going over the parts that need that metal. And it's very fast. Uh, uh, to be honest, as soon as I found them, you know, I've been painting for a, a few years now, but as soon as I found them, I was like, oh my god, where have you been <laughs> all this time? There we go. So that's now the grey on uh, this halberd here. And now these are all wet, so to go on to the next coat, or the next colour, I suppose, not the next coat. You only do one coat with these, which is another beauty of it. Uh, you just move on. As you can see, here we've got um, uh, Henry V, I want to say, um, on horse, and I've used the blues and the reds. Uh, I, I use the yellow for the gold. What I will do, especially with cat units, I don't, I don't really, I'm not going to be going over with metal, uh, like uh, Lead Belcher or uh, one of the golds. With these, with this miniature, for one of the more key miniatures, I will use a gold, kind of watered down gold to go over this yellow, to get the uh, the idea of actual um, gold. Now there's a really good white. Let me show you the white. Um, Apothecary right, Apothecary uh, white is is uh, the white version. It's kind of like a very light grey. It's the best way to think of it, but it gives really good effect. It looks just like white. I really like this colour. Uh, just while we're waiting for that, uh, here's another one. So this is using the blues and the metals. Um, real, real quick, very, very fast, and it gives a really good result. Well, I think, anyway. So um, this, we'll do this flag now. So literally, pack it full of white. <laughs> now, when you put it on first, it's you go, oh, wow, what have I done? I just ruined my model. Um, but then as you spread it out, You'll see the effect it has. It's 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 absolutely great. Uh, this one's a bit of a strange model. It's got like um, these big flat parts as the uh, as the uh, connecting 
part of the uh, the uh, bridle. So get this on, like so. Let's have a little bit on the oh sorry, let's have a little bit on the shield as well. Uh, the horse will be uh, a brown colour. And let's get in there, like so. And then inside of the cloak is white in this case, according to the uh, card art. So we just place that down. And you can see how quick this is. Um, I just love it for that. Uh, especially if, you, if you're a person like me, who's just got so many uh, models to paint. And I really like to, to play with on board games with actual painted miniatures. I think it, it, make, it does make it. Um, and you can get to a decent standard um, of model. It'll look fine. I mean, this is not going. none of these are going to win competitions. But they certainly look good on the table. Um, especially compared to, like, grey plastic. So you can see there that the it, it looks a bit like a grey, but it will dry really quite well. So don't worry too much at the, at the start. Whoops. At the start with, it will dry to a, a nicer kind of white. And it does really look like white. I just really love it. Get in there as well, I think. There we go. Right, maybe get there as well. Okay, so that guy, the king, king's white is done. Okay, and that will, excuse me, that will dry really nice uh, and white. So what this, I would say this is an essential uh, contrast. That yellow and that grey, they are definitely essential. Then you want a bright blue and a bright green. Now I've also placed, um, painted some Marvel Crisis Protocol and uh, you want vivid colours. Now this is awesome. This is the uh, Talisar blue, which is what, which comes out like this. Uh, so it's a really, I mean, look, I love that blue, especially against the yellow. Um, so Talisar blue, a really fantastic colour. Uh, Warp Lightning is a nice bright green. Blood Angels Red, I guess it's a kind of classic. This is pure blood red, which is what this red is. And then for I've I recently got an orange, just because I don't I don't mix my contrast. You can you can get a medium and you can mix them all. You can blend with them. You can do whatever you want. So they've got a lot more. Um, they've got a lot more that you can do with them than I do. Um, but for my per all intents and purposes, like three pound odd a pot, I was like, well, I'll just get an orange. And it's a really nice orange. Um, oh, this is a great colour. It's, it, it says contrast a Keelan green. But it's more of a blue, to be honest. It's more of a blue colour. It's a turquoise. It's a more blue, on the blue shade of turquoise. Lovely colour it is. Um, then you want some browns. Um, snake bite. So, Saigal brown is a very dark brown. It's a very dark brown, but you get subtle uh, things. If you want a really light brown, like uh, like light leather, I suppose like really tan, like a tan, uh, Agaros Dunes is, is a fantastic colour. I really like that one. Um, this one, Skeleton Horde, for all of your uh, your bones, um, but as well as anything, if you want a really light, so you've got the Dunes, and then you go even lighter with Skeleton Horde. Uh, then I've got uh, Gilliman Flesh, which I use for all of my flesh. Uh, so have I done it on him? I think I have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it might be quite hard to see, but his face is Gilliman Flesh. Uh, then we've got uh, the, the the best brown, which is uh, Snake Bite Leather, an essential. That's a lovely colour. Uh, I do all my woodwork with that. Uh, Militarum green is is a nice military green, effectively. So it's it's, it's not as bright, which is great for some of those things. Of course, uh, the, one of the key ones you need. I mean, when I was doing Batman Gotham City Chronicles, <laughs> you have to have a black, obviously. And this is fantastic. It's a black Templar, and and remember, all of these are just one coat. All you need is one coat. Uh, then I got some uh, some new ones. Um, so th this is lovely. It's a uh, Griff Charger Grey, and it's kind of like a bluey grey, a very light bluey grey. I really like that one. That was a nice addition. I've got a purple, so shy shyish purple, uh, which is just your standard purple. Purples don't come out great with this. That's the only thing I would say. 
And then that is all of my contrast paint. So I managed to paint pretty much everything just by using those paints. Uh, the other thing I would suggest as well is have a pot of the raft bone. Because if you want to make little changes, you've sprayed it obviously with the raft bone, your miniature. You may need, to, like I said, if you go over a piece and you go, ah, oh, that's ruined the model, just go over it with this, over that part, and go back over with your contrast paint. And it'll seem like nothing else has changed. Uh, the other two that you can use as kind of like little primers are if you want more of a grey, uh, 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 a more of a duller um, base coat, uh, grey sea is fantastic, or uh, Corax white for the brighter, like what I've got on here. Okay, so they're they're the basically they're the paints I use. Um, <laughs> pretty much that that's it exclusively uh, to paint everything, and I, I, I find it not a problem. The browns are the key. The browns are the key to have some different shades of brown, especially as I'm not mixing. Uh, you know, before I, I got these contrasts, and I still do to a point, um, I use um, a wet palette. Uh, they're, they're essential. They're, they're what I found those so useful because you can mix your colours and it'll last for days. Uh, so you can get those those same colours back. And uh, the, the, the different shades of colours you can produce with a wet palette and uh, your normal paints, it, it, it's just brilliant, obviously. Uh, and I still use the washes. I mean, Agrax Earthshade, Nuln oil are still essential. Uh, lead belcher still essential um, for even when using the contrast. What you can actually do is you can do like a base coat of lead belcher, and then you can use any of the colours from the contrast range, and it will come up as metallic in that colour. It's, it's it's fantastic. It's really good for that. Right, how's he going? Is he is he finished drying? Yeah, I just want to show you the brown um, uh, before I leave. Um, let's have a look. So the the only problem I have is trying to find the colours because they're not exactly. I mean, you look at the top of snake bite leather and it looks like black. <laughs> so it's really hard sometimes, and this is what I mean. So you can see here that uh, I've got a gap uh, because it's it's just solidifying in, and it's and I have actually I have actually cleaned all of these out once before. So it's very annoying. Um, but it, it's just it's the nature of Citadel paint pots uh, that happen with just normal paints as well. So here comes the brown. So just plot it on. And again, there's. I'm not too fast. As I said, I'm not going in for competitions for any of these. I just want them to look really good on the table. I just want them to look good on the table for my standard. So it doesn't have to be hours and hours, especially with something like Joan of Arc that you got like 500 figures to paint. Uh, miniatures to paint, it, it'll literally take you a lifetime if you were just going, to, you know, like doing all of the, uh, the, the the base layering, the the washing, the highlights. I mean, it would take you forever, and I just don't have that time. You know, I've got a family and all the rest of it, uh, so you know, I get a few a few hours in the evenings, um, and I don't want to spend every single one of those painting. Um, so I, I just like to do an odd paint session. And then, and then I'm happy. And this enables me to do it. So there we go. So there we go, there's the browns. You can notice how it's pulled here. So I just pull my brush across just to make sure I get an evenish tone. And then just, oh, oops, just get around those. And then I'm gonna do, uh, what I'm gonna do on the uh, feet is I'm just gonna use the Saigor brown, which is the really dark brown uh, to, um, to do that. So there we go. And you can start to see that it's, it's it just gives a fantastic result for literally very minimal effort, and that's what I love about these things. Uh, they're just superb for that. I think he's still worth. Oops, um, let's do this one as well. Uh, so if you can get hold of Rathbone uh, Citadel Rathbone spray, that's the best one to prime your miniatures. You you know, I would say with Joan of Arc, don't even bother Zenithelling. Uh, unless you're talking about the monsters and stuff like that, uh, just go straight on with the um, with the um, Rathbone if you've got it. As I said, these are all done with a with a white primer. I'll show you in a second. It was a cheap one, um, and it seems. To, and that, that was my worry at first. I thought oh, I'm going to have to keep buying the Citadel sprays uh, to use. Um, this part I've just got on his head. Just give use your use your thumb uh, to to just brush that off. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So. Um, you don't need really expensive primers for this. I mean, it works best with Citadel's Rathbone, it seems. That's, that's been my best results. Um, 
but as you can see, this is just using a cheap, uh, I think it was four pounds for the spray, uh, for the white spray, um, and it and it works really well. There we go. Okay, so there's the brown on the next one. You notice it's here, and you will notice this. You, it has a tendency, to contrast paints, to miss bits. Um, you might notice with the chainmail that there may be a few little links that, have, that have, the paint's missed, and then you have to just go in there, go with it again. Just go, go, don't go mental because if you if you go for two coats of a of a contrast, it won't give the contrast effect. It'll just literally paint as a solid color. Um, so they do have that disadvantage. You can't you, you can't go over to make to 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 right mistakes. As it were, uh, I love the contrast paints. I think I think they, I think they make a uh, quick time. Uh, you know, painting so much quicker. They give really vibrant. What well, I like, you know, I like the vibrant colours. I think that 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 just works. Um, and I, I, you know, it. I'm sold on them. I'm definitely sold on the the contrast colours. I think they're uh, they're fantastic. I still have my my original paints, and you know, they last they last for a lifetime. Uh, the paints just don't. Don't seem to go off. Um, uh, some, some are, some are better than others, admittedly, but most of them just don't go off. So, you know, uh, I still have those. I still have my wet palette that I might go to certain, um, certain. If, if if I'm painting like some of the monsters in Blood Rage or uh, or Rising Sun, I might use a bit of a mix. I certainly, I, I don't, you know, I go uh, Citadel contrast color for pretty much most of my um, my units for any game. Um, but then, when I when I've got those special miniatures, I tend to spend a little bit more time um, and, and doing those uh, with all different types of paint te painting techniques. Um, so I just wanted to sh to show uh, the contrast in action on Joan of Arc. Um, I mean, I love this game, and uh, it really does shine if you've got painting miniatures when you're playing it. If it's just a sea of grey, it's not quite the same. It's still a great game. Don't get me wrong. But painting miniatures is always uh, something I've, I've always enjoyed, and um, and it's great to, to be able to do that so quickly. Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna <laughs> point you too much. Uh, watch me just paint uh, the rest of these. I'm gonna go on and crack on and just paint the rest of these. Uh, to be honest, the long the thing that takes the most time now is basing all of these uh, miniatures. Um, but I'll just use a standard flock, and then um, and just PVA that on. But I do use. I need to show you this. Absolutely fantastic. I, well, I love it. A Grillin Badlands. It's a texture. It's one of the textures. Now, uh, Citadel do quite a few of these textures. It's superb. All it is is a bit of sand and so forth, uh, thin sand mixed in with some PVA glue. Um, <laughs> I think that's the effect of it, with a bit of um, paint to give it the, the uh, you know, the dunes look, as it were. Uh, but you put this on on wet and then when it dries it kind of cracks and it and, and it and the sand particles come up and it and then you just use a, a wash of Agrax Earthshade and it really looks like mud and then you can put the, the uh, grass flock on top and it, it looks really good it looks very organic it looks uh, very realistic for again not a huge amount of effort uh, no spraying no nothing like that and when you've got like white bases <laughs> you really need to cover them um, so yeah, uh, and and what I technically do, to be honest, most of these have got will have dark shoes, dark, dark boots. So I just go with the Saigor brown, and I just go over the base as I'm doing the feet. So number one, I don't have to be as, as careful with the feet, but number two, I'm covering it with a mud colour. So if any of the white, none of the white's going to shine through because you, that's you don't want that. So you can see here, actually, that's exactly what I've done here. I think this was snake bite leather actually, rather than Saigor brown. Um, but just to get a mud colour, and then what I will do on here is put this onto onto it. Then I will flock. Well, sorry. Then Agrax Earthshade. Then flock uh, to to give the finished result. Okay, guys. Thanks very much.